Hey everybody, it's Miss Beck, and today we are going to be recording what are kings and queens. Today we're going to learn about the basic facts about kings and queens. We're going to learn details about kings and queens from our texts and our images, and we are going to understand the word royal. Um, we are also going to understand that there are multiple meanings of the word rules. Okay. We're going to draw and discuss an illustration about kings and queens. Are you ready? So, what are kings and queens? Today we are going to be learning about kings and queens. Some of you may already know some things about kings and queens. Stop for a moment and tell your adult something you already know about kings and queens. Just like the teacher is the leader of the classroom and the president is the leader of the country of the United States, some countries in the world have leaders called kings and queens. Kings and queens are different leaders from teachers or presidents because they are not hired or elected. Instead, they are born into special families called royal families. A king is a man from a royal family who is the leader of a country. A queen is a woman from a royal family who is the leader of a country. Kings and queens have children and the children are called princes and princesses. And one day they may grow up to become the king or queen. Kings and queens and their royal families live quite differently than other people do. So today we're gonna to talk about what are kings and queens. And I'm gonna share my screen with you. And I'm gonna show you a very, very neat thing. You're gonna love it. Where is it? Ooh. Okay, so look at this fancy building. What do you think a building like this may be used for? Can you believe this building is actually someone's house? Well, it's not just any house, it's a palace. This palace used to belong to the Queen of France. Well, what do you think's inside? It must be nice if it was built for a king or queen. In fact, this palace has 440 rooms inside. As leaders of the country, kings and queens often have the biggest and best homes in the land, known as palaces or castles. As the leader, the king or queen of a particular area of land rule the people who live there, and they make decisions about the particular area and the people who live there. This area of land is called the kingdom. There used to be many, many kingdoms in the world. Today, however, there is not as many kings or queens as there used to be. Tell me about this picture. Who do you think this picture might be? This is actually a picture of King Richard II. And the saying is, it's good to be king. That's an old saying. If you look at this king, whose name was King Richard II of England, you will begin to get an idea of why this holds true. He was the king of England. And if you walked into a palace in England hundreds of years ago and saw this person, you would not have any trouble guessing he was the king. He was the most powerful person in the kingdom and he always got the best of everything, the best houses, the best clothing, the best food. Kings did not have to say please and thank you, and they did not even have to dress themselves. They had servants to do that for them. Servants are men or women who are hired to take care of the king and queen as well as their land. Pretty much everything a king or queen touched or owned was called royal. If something is royal, it belongs to a king or queen. The soft, fluffy, fluffy robes King Richard II wore were his royal clothing. 
He drank from a royal cup and he only hang, hung out with royal people, the king, the queen, or someone in the royal family. The daughter, the prince, the princess, or the prince were allowed to use only the royal things. King Richard II is holding two things in this picture. In one hand, he is holding a royal orb, and in another, he is holding a royal scepter. These are both ceremonial objects or things that the king wore to remind people that he was in charge. That hat he's wearing is called a crown. That's no ordinary hat. Crowns are usually made of some kind of precious metal like gold or silver and decorated with fancy jewels like rubies and emeralds and sapphires. These jewels were called the crown jewels. The scepter and the orb the crown was like an important symbol of the king's power. A symbol is something that represents or stands for something else. When people saw the king's crown, they knew that the person who wore it was powerful and important. Ooh. Here's a close-up picture of a crown. It's made of gold and loaded with fancy pearls and other jewels. A hat like this would not be good for keeping the sun out of your eyes, and it would not be very good for keeping your head warm. But if you were wearing it, it meant that you were the king or queen, the royal person of the kingdom, and you were the royal leader of the kingdom. A few hundred years ago, it would have been very nice for a king or queen ruling their very own kingdom to make all the rules and laws that the people had to follow. But it would have been very difficult. Kings and queens had big responsibilities. Responsibilities were things that they had to do. Every day, people came to ask them for money or advice, and every day they made important decisions about things that were happening in the kingdom. A famous king named Charlemagne was so important that the artist made a stained glass window with his image. Look at his fancy chair. The king's chair was called a throne, and as you might imagine, only the king was allowed to sit there. His throne was raised up on a platform so he would appear tall and important, even when he was sitting down. Well, what's that in his hand? Charlemagne is holding a sword and an orb to remind people that he is the king. Over the next few weeks, you will learn more about kings and kingdoms, queens, and everything to do with royalty. So now, I'm going to show you our sheet that we're going to work on. So um, our title of our knowledge unit is Kings and Queens. And so what I'd like you to do is write your name, and I'd like you to color the crown jewels. Make them beautiful. And... You're gonna to come to lesson number one, what are kings and queens? So for this one, we're gonna fill in the blank using the word king or queen. This is a, and the male was called a king, and this is a queen. So you're gonna fill in those lines. Word work, royal. Draw three things that are royal. So our, um, story mentioned three things that were royal. So you're gonna draw three of those things. I'm gonna color the king and queen and make them very royal and beautiful. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.